Hello everyone. I thought uh, I'd do a playthrough of uh, Civilization V. Um, it's available for Linux on Steam, so that makes this uh, one of the few games that uh, I do play without having to do complications like Wine. Uh, now, I'm not playing it with the uh, stock uh, settings. I'm using a few mods. Um, first off is uh, one that eliminates the experience cap from fighting barbarians. Uh, this, is, uh, this cap, I guess, is intended to balance things so you can't get uh, massively uh, promoted units uh, by farming barbarians. I've found, though, it doesn't seem to make much difference when you're just playing against the AIs. Um, I also have Info Addict, which is uh, useful for some additional information in certain circumstances. I don't use it much, but it can be useful. Also, I have a mod that makes some fixes to the Lake Victoria a Natural Wonder, so it actually behaves like water. Uh, and one that reduces the warmonger penalty for uh, fighting. Uh, it's pretty clear from my experience with the game that uh, the uh, threshold for warmongering is way too low. Uh, it makes it pretty much impossible to, uh, uh, to do any kind of a, a war, even if you're defending yourself. Uh, for instance, you've got, say, the Zulus or the Huns who like to fight continually. Uh, the only way to uh, defend yourself sometimes is to wipe them out, and the uh, warmonger penalty then pretty much causes everybody to start, well, fighting with you. Uh, I've also uh, got a mod that allows you to choose your reward from ancient ruins. Uh, this does kind of uh, destabilize the uh, uh, the ruins mechanic, but it does apply to all players. So uh, uh, I find it uh, it just makes my game experience a little better. Uh, I also have a uh, mod that uh, has the mint uh, you know, building actually. Uh, uh, apply its benefits to copper as well, which makes sense. Uh, this pontoon bridge one is just uh, for amusement. It, there's very few circumstances where it's actually useful. But if you have, uh, say, the right uh, structure, it can allow you to get units to and from an island uh, with just the road uh, movement cost. I've also got a mod that allows for some uh, slight modifications to uh, snow and desert tiles, which makes them slightly more useful. Uh, that makes those uh, tundra uh, starts a little less bad. I've also got a mod that uh, sets up uh, so that you start with a settler and a scout rather than a settler and a warrior. That's far more useful, especially if you're playing on the uh, huge maps. And I also have a mod that allows updating or upgrading scouts to explorers later in the game. That's not so useful, but it does... Uh, if you happen to be in a situation where you say started on an island and now you finally get access to the continent, uh, later in the game, uh, or another continent later in the game, you can use the explorer to uh, find out what's going on there a lot faster. I also have a mod that uh, uh, enhances water tiles so they're not basically useless like they are in the uh, stock game, and that makes coastal cities much less underpowered. Uh, this would help uh, civilizations like Polynesia, who get tend to get island starts as well. So with these mods enabled, I find the game feels a little bit more, well, 
playable, I guess. Uh, now, I'm not, I have a whole bunch of others in this mod list here that I'm not using. Uh, I've tried some of them out and they, uh, you know, they, they work, uh, you know, reasonably well. Some of them, uh, some of them can't work on Linux because they actually replace the core game DLL, like the uh, diplomatic features one here, which would be nice, but it can't be used on, on the Linux version. Okay, so let's get a game started here. So I'll set up a game here. Now I like to play Poland because uh, I I tend to uh, end up with that uh, city sprawl tactic going on. Uh, it does pretty much break the game uh, if you, you know as uh, because of that uh, free social policy every era. But if you're expanding rapidly, uh, it doesn't really. Uh, well, it, it still doesn't offset the uh, handicap you get uh, on uh, happiness in your empire and so on in the early game. So uh, it doesn't break it as much as it might. And, you know, I'm playing for fun, right? So uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to get any achievements or whatever because I'm using mods. Um, for this uh, playthrough, though, I'm going to put this on a random uh, civilization. But I'll put the rest of it, uh, I'll leave the rest of it uh, the way I usually play. So, uh, so I, I'm going to play on a Pangea map. Uh, that's just... Uh, uh, to avoid the tiny island syndrome where you get handicapped by having no resources or uh, or what have you. I'm going to play on a huge map. I'm going to play at normal difficulty. That's uh, level 3. Uh, the game is way too easy if you go down to the lower difficulties once you get good at it. I'm going to play a marathon game, so that means this series is going to go on for quite a while. Uh, I'm going to start in the ancient area, era. Uh, I'm going to have. I'm going to make the world five billion years old. And it's going to. I'm going to keep it temperate, uh, and with normal rainfall. But I'm going to put low sea level. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, I don't want to be having heavy contention for land with city states and neighbors right off the bat. Now it may still happen but this will reduce the uh, conflict in the early game. Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to go for a strategic balance on the resources because I find oftentimes you don't have the early game resources you need otherwise. Now I'm going to turn off time victory because uh, I've had it happen uh, enough times on uh, the marathon games where it, it times out and you win based on your score before you can achieve any other kind of victory. Uh, science uh, is uh, uh, fairly easy to attain uh, if you don't happen to win a cultural uh, victory first. Uh, diplomatic can be difficult but it's certainly possible if you maintain enough cash and you can buy off the city-states Domination is fairly difficult on a huge map. It's not impossible, but it's fairly difficult. I don't aim for that, but as long as uh, you can defend your capital city, there's no need to turn it off because if you can defend your capital city, nobody else can win a domination victory. Uh, so, uh, I also play with quick combat and quick movement enabled because I find while the animations and so on are nice, they get tedious after a while, so I simply just turn them off. You do lose some cues on what's going on in the game, um, but uh, it does speed up the gameplay quite a bit in the later game, so there's that. 
Uh, sometimes I play with City Raising disabled. I'm not going to this time, but uh, sometimes I do. Um, I'm going to keep Ancient Ruins enabled uh, simply because I have those mods that allow you to choose what you find. Uh, but basically the rest of this is uh, all pretty standard default settings. Uh, I've got 12 sieves, so 11 competitors, all random, uh, and 24 city-states. So I'm going to start the game now. I rolled Korea. So that's actually a pretty good roll. Um, it's uh, good for science. And uh, I'm not quite sure what the, uh, the units and stuff are. Uh, the Huacha should be a pretty decent uh, unit uh, early on. Of course, it takes forever to uh, set up the game. Um, here we go. So the Huacha uh, replaces the Trebuchet. Okay. And not so good for attacking cities, but okay. Uh, the Turtle Ship. Uh, Okay, so it's not so, those aren't so uh, f fancy really, but the, uh, the science here um, could be pretty good. So let's take a look at our start here. Okay, so I've got uh, wheat, uh, plains wheat, that's pretty good. Um, Let's see, minimal uh, uh, coastal exposure, so it'll be hard to attack from the sea. I uh, have uh, truffles and ivory, so that's kind of good. I think I'm probably going to settle right there, uh, but I'm going to uh, move the scout over here and see what I can see. And yes, it does look like that's probably as good as anything else, based on what I can find out on turn one. So, I'll settle my capital there. Um, okay. So, because we want uh, the borders to expand, uh, I'm, I'm going to build a monument right off. You can't build a settler with size one cities, so... Uh, so I'll, I'll go with the monument. Um, but let's see what the... Uh, okay, so it, it doesn't really matter which tile it works here. Um, right, now, the science. Um, pottery is generally where I go first uh, because that gets me the shrine and that allows me... a a crack at an early religion. Uh, early, a, a good early uh, pantheon at least is uh, really helpful. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And now I want to I, I want to explore around my starting point here. The first turn takes a while because the AIs are all settling their capital city. Okay, so I'm going to wander around here a bit. Uh, what I'm hoping for is a uh, ancient ruin. Which I haven't found. So that's, uh, usually you find one a little bit quicker than this. Now there's one. Uh, 
Okay, now what options do we have here? Culture, technology, or we can upgrade the unit. This will upgrade the scout to an archer that but has that has the existing promotions that the scout already has. That can be useful, but at this point, um, culture is where I want to go. So that gets me uh, much closer to the first social policy. Okay, I see we have a range of mountains over here. That would make this area a decent spot for a city. And while mountains don't do any production, they do prevent passage. So it protects the uh, that side of your city. And there's some wonders that you have to have a mountain nearby for as well. Okay, we have another one here. Um, okay, we, we could have the... This would uh, increase the population of our capital by one. Uh, the gold isn't that useful. Um, the maps also aren't. But the new technology could be, so we'll do that. And what did we get? We got mining. That's actually kind of good. Okay, so we'll keep wandering about here. Oh, look, there's another one. So what I'm looking for here is one that actually gives us faith. If we can get get a faith option here early on, uh, which we didn't, um, it, it will uh, let us potentially get first Pantheon. Then we'll get full, full um, choice on what we select. Um... What should we do here? Upgrade the unit. We'll actually take the population boost here. Now the reason for that is it, uh, whoops, we get another production out of that. And the city will grow a little bit faster. Oh, and we've got a city-state here. Oh, and, and we're the first ones to contact them, so we've got 30 gold. And let's see which direction will go this way. So it looks like we've got the coast over here. Yeah, it definitely looks like that because we've got ocean tiles here. Okay, so there isn't much more over there, so we'll have to wander over this way. As you can see, the uh, early game is uh, fairly uh, boring. Um, not much goes on. Okay, we got our first policy. Now, I used to always open Liberty right away to get the, so I could rush for the pyramids. Uh, but because I want to try and get an early religion, uh, and you know I won't get first religion if the Celts or Ethiopia is in the game probably, but uh, otherwise I have a good shot at it. Um, if I open Piety, 
then when I finally research pottery, shri the shrine will build faster. And then I'll have the option to get to double my faith production from uh, shrines. And that will be useful as well. Okay, let's see what's over this way. Now, if you're wondering about my scouting strategy, it's because a scout doesn't pay a penalty for entering forests or hills. Uh, it's a good idea to uh, to hit the hills where they have longer visibility, so you can you can see more of the terrain when you hit it. Um, that isn't always going to be the best choice, but often it is. Oh, we found another ruin. Uh, maybe this one will have the uh, faith option in it. We haven't seen any barbarian encampments. Uh, oh, we can enhance culture with this one. So let's do that. The closer we can get to the extra uh, faith point on the uh, shrine, uh, the faster we'll get to the 900 or 600 f faith we'll need to get our first great prophet uh, which you need to found a religion also get us to the pantheon faster now the pantheons are um, somewhat annoying the first pantheon is pretty cheap but each after someone founds a pantheon the cost of the next one goes up so we want to try and avoid uh, anything like that. Okay, and we're going to finish our monument uh, this turn. Uh, so let's uh, let's take a look here. Uh, worker or settler? Actually, I'm going to start working on a warrior because we do need to defend our capital. And we'll need to defend our worker when uh, when we start doing that. Uh, study the tribe's religion. This is what I, I wanted. This will get us a, a little bit of faith. And we got 40 faith. That will be enough for a pantheon. And here is a barbarian encampment. So um, hopefully it doesn't attack and decimate our scout. Uh, we don't really have the strength to fight this guy, especially since he's planted in a forest. But first we'll found our Pantheon. Now, we have a couple of options here. We have wheat, uh, which we could gain extra food from. Um, but... It's not... That might actually be the best choice, actually, here, because we got wheat all over the place here um, okay so what options have we got how we can get culture from shrines um, we don't have any desert tiles around our capital so that's not so good uh, we don't have copper iron or salt showing right now um, because uh, I selected strategic balance there should be iron near the capital uh, the faster growth rate is not so helpful as it would sound. Um, production in cities size 3. Uh, that seems like a good thing, but there could be better options. Culture from pastures, well, maybe not so much. Um, fishing boats, well, that's not so helpful really. Um, this one is good if you're playing a one city challenge. Um, this one, if you have wine and incense nearby, can be good. Uh, let's see. This one could be good if you, there isn't a better one available. If you're late to the Pantheon game. Uh, this one could be good if you got resources around that, uh, that have camps to improve them. 
this one can be good if you're aiming for science um, and you have and you're going to have lots of cities um, uh, this one not really so useful uh, if you had a natural wonder right in your immediate uh, borders um, uh, for your capital at this point this would be a good one to select we don't so not so much uh, culture from plantations. We don't have plantation uh, resources nearby. Culture and faith for gold and silver. We don't have that nearby. Uh, faster border growth can be good, but I'm not overly concerned about that. Uh, culture from jungle. We don't have jungle again. So um, let's see. Yeah, so we'll go for the banana, citrus, wheat, plus food. Because we have a wheat resource here. And we'll go back on to exploring another ruin. Okay. Oh, this is nice. Uh, we can discover a great profit. Now, it won't be enough, but it'll get us a long way toward that 600 faith we need. So, 190 faith. So, that basically knocked um, 80 turns off of our uh, build to a religion and a city-state ooh again we're the first ones to find them it's interesting that uh, we haven't encountered another civilization yet Okay, here we go. That's pottery. Okay, so what have we got over here? Well, we kind of want trapping. But I'm going for masonry so that uh, I can build the pyramids if I get to liberty here. Also, we'll get a shrine building. Ooh, another ruin. or tech yeah, we'll go for tech here calendar okay As I said before, we'll go for this one.
Ooh. Another ruin. Okay, we'll go for culture here. Wow, that's a lot more ruins than I would have thought would be anywhere nearby here. This is really nice. Another dump of faith. We'll go for the tack here. Bronze working is good. That shows us iron. I'm and I'm wondering why no other um, civilization has had an explorer in here yet. Um, either we should have met one, or somebody else should have found soul. Anyway. We'll try and build Stonehenge now. Uh, the reason is that it's plus five faith. And it also has great engineer points, so those are both good. Uh, and that was uh, opened up to us by Calendar. I'm wondering if maybe all these mountains are why uh, we're relatively isolated here. Here's another city-state. Again, we're the first to contact them. Oh, here's another one over here. I would be surprised if we're the first to contact this one, and we aren't. Okay, so maybe it's because we have just a land bridge here. Huh. We have to go through city-state territory to get around this side of those mountains. Okay, well let's see.
Well, that's explaining why we found so many of the ancient ruins, because other civilizations weren't picking those ones off during their exploration. Uh, which uh, worked out in our favor. Like on Pangea, this is about as close to a medium-sized island all to yourself as you can get. So it looks like we got something of a lucky start here. Whether it remains so remains to be seen. Oops, we're trespassing now. And it's hard to see these in the forest, so... But we'll leave right away, so that won't be a big problem. So I'm going to follow the coast around and see if there's another land bridge. Otherwise, it may be uh, Ragusa here that is keeping us from meeting anyone. Huh, another ruin. Oh, let's see. I'm actually going to upgrade my uh, scout to an archer here. And that way I can start picking off the barbarian encampments. Now it's worth picking these guys off, not just for the experience for my uh, archer here, but also for the gold you get, and in this case it's a city-state quest, so it's worth doing as well. So we'll start working on that. It'll take a few turns because this is an archer, um, but I don't take damage attacking as an archer as well. Uh, so it's a really nice way to sit there and pick off barbarians especially since they tend not to attack if they don't think they'll win. We're going to get a promotion on this guy pretty soon here. Uh, it should be next turn, I think, if I've got my sums right. Uh, yep. So... What I want to do is I want to aim for the double attack um, 
promotion, which means you have to get your up to level three on uh, one of the, the barrage or accuracy, I believe. Um, okay, so here's our gold from the barbarians, and uh, we've made friends with Brussels. Right, and we need another. Okay. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, we'll go for animal husbandry so that uh, we actually find our horses. And so that we can get toward um, uh, improving our ivory as well. Okay, what have we got here? Uh, barbarians. Okay, so we'll work on picking them off as well. Oh, we're getting culture from uh, from our friend there. Okay, what have we got here? Okay. This is uh, an improvement over previous civilization games. Cities can actually defend themselves. Uh, you don't actually need units in them to do that. Uh, which is quite nice. I'll have to pick this guy off at some point. Because I suspect this is where this guy came from. Now I'm not overly worried here because uh, I don't have any improvements for the barbarian to pillage. Um, okay, so let's... Um, okay. pick this guy off okay now I could rush here for the reformation belief um, but instead I'm gonna open Liberty uh, and that unlocks building the pyramids the pyramids are nice because uh, they give you faster improvements and you get some workers as well should probably check on soul there and see if I can uh, improve the uh, build speed on the uh, oops right so if I do a production focus I knock 10 turns off Stonehenge but No, I don't stagnate the city. Okay. So that's good. I should have done that sooner, but uh, that's no biggie. If I don't get Stonehenge, it's not the end of the world, but it would be really nice. Yeah, and it looks like it's just that land bridge that gets into this part of the continent. actually going to trespass here intentionally, but we're friends, so it's not really trespassing. Okay. So we've got some barbarians here.
Okay. So it looks like there isn't much else out this way. So I might as well pick off that barbarian camp. I'll look over here just to make sure I don't see, say, an island over there. Nope, doesn't look like it. So I'll start working on picking this guy off. Got to remember to end the turn, too. Now, the reason I like playing the game in marathon mode is you actually get plenty of time to explore your map, uh, which you don't get as much of in the slower pace ones. Uh, it also means that you've got plenty of time to actually um, do your uh, fighting in a war, uh, which is uh, something that's a little harder on the uh, faster paced games. Uh, just because it takes so long to uh, get anywhere. Okay, now I'm picking off the camps for two reasons. Uh, one, because not having the barbarians running around is good, and also because it builds my gold up. Uh, is at some point I really need to build a settler and uh, since I'm building wonders in my capital uh, I need to actually buy my settlers um, and that is going to require uh, settlers what 1160 gold I believe so we're not even halfway there yet And we're not accumulating gold very fast either. Okay, that's animal husbandry, and we now have some horses that we can find. Uh, now, what should we look at here? Well, uh, let's go look over here. We need trapping for ivory, uh, and for the truffles, um, and for the deer. Uh, okay, so we'll go for trapping now only 18 more turns or so for uh, Stonehenge we may get sniped on that but possibly not uh, at least even if we do get sniped um, we'll end up with a gold boost as a result um, it's not as efficient as just collecting gold but uh, it's certainly better than uh, nothing at all. Okay, where else? Okay, there's a camp here, which is a city-state quest. Okay. Now, where... Ah, here's horses. Okay. So this is uh, what, um, okay, that's four, that's six. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. And this is what the strategic balance guarantees. I think it also guarantees an oil resource somewhere around here. Ooh, city got bigger.
Okay. Okay, we're, we're not going to be friends with Brussels much longer. That's fine. Given how few, given that we've met nobody yet, I think it's uh, good odds that somebody else will end up getting the uh, uh, World Congress thing. Um, and simply because I'm probably not going to meet everybody soon enough, uh, even if I'm the first one to get uh, printing press. Okay, so we'll work on this camp. Um, okay, we're uh, ap approaching our 600 faith for a great profit. Um, it would be nice to uh, find another um, faith trove, but it's not. We're not likely to. Uh, even if we get over that land bridge, odds are the other civilizations have already. Um, uh, cleared out all of the ancient ruins. Okay, so we'll get up to level two on that. Um, there's a couple of nice promotions that you get uh, once you get these leveled up a bit. Uh, that includes like uh, multiple attacks, and it also includes healing even if you do something, um, things like that. Now, without the one mod that I have that removes the experience cap for fighting barbarians, uh, this unit would not get any further promotions out of uh, fighting these barbarians. Um, no further experience. Um, but... Uh, Since uh, I do have that in there, uh, I don't have that limitation, so I'll be able to accumulate the additional promotions. As I said at the in the opening, that doesn't really unbalance the game uh, for a single-player game, and also all other players get the same benefits as well. Uh, so uh, it's not just for me that I'm benefiting from that. Um, and yes, there wasn't anything over here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got Stonehenge. Good. Uh, so, uh, what am I going to build over in Seoul? I'm going to build the pyramids. Um, that's actually a particularly useful wonder. Uh, there's a really good chance I'm going to get sniped on it. Uh, simply because I went for Stonehenge first, but uh, Stonehenge actually had a better um, scenario. See, instead of two faith per turn, I've got seven. So I'm going to get to that 600 a lot faster. Now I'm going to need a worker real soon now as well. So I'm going to clean out some barbarians around here, and then I'm going to send my uh, explore. You know, like my uh, actually, I'm going to keep them around near my cities for now, because um, after trapping, I'm going to go for optics, just so that I get uh, embarkation. And to get the embarkation promotion, I have to get back to my territory with my unit. So. It's going to be a better um, uh, result to get, get the optics first. 
Okay, now since I've got an archer here, he's shooting at me, and that's why I took some damage. That's also why I'm going for the archer first instead of this guy, who isn't likely to uh, attack me. And if he does, then I'll just wander away and hide, right? But now the archer's gone, I can go about picking this guy off. Okay, I'm coming up on an hour for this part, so um, after I've sorted this guy out uh, and let my uh, um, scout archer here heal, uh, I'll probably call the part here. Now, it could be funny if uh, this camp spawns a new unit on this turn. Uh, it does happen. And it didn't. Okay, so I'll clear the camp. And I'll heal. Now, I'd heal faster if I move back here. But the number of turns it'll take total won't account for the movement as well. somewhere to send this guy to do something useful um, well this camp is a is a quest so that's where to send him I think oh there's my great prophet so I can found my religion this means I believe that I've got first religion uh, so we'll found a religion that gives me my pick of uh, of tenets, and uh, that'll be good. Uh, but anyway, I'll, f I'll deal. I just pick Buddhism because, you know, the icon's nice, and it doesn't really change anything. Okay, so a founder belief. Tithe is nice because it gives you gold per follower. Uh, that turns out to be better once you start getting large cities. Um, gold per city is good if you got a bunch of small cities. So I'm going to go with tithe. And now in here, there's a whole bunch of things that seem like like they'd be really good. Um, cathedrals is okay. Uh, for uh, there's several for buildings you purchase with faith uh, cathedrals is okay if you don't get the other ones um, monasteries are okay if you don't get the other ones uh, pagodas and mosques though are the best now I, th I find pagodas are better overall because it's two happiness instead of just one even though it's less faith but both have two culture, and that's really nice. So, and there's a bunch of other things here. Um, you can improve your production and the hermitage thing, but uh, pagodas are the one I usually go with if I can get it. And if I happen to get uh, my enhancement, if I get to enhance my religion, 
before anybody takes mosques, I'll take mosques as well. Um, okay, so this is, would pr I think probably be where being the Byzantines would be nice. Anyway, um, I found the religion. Now I need to get up to 900 faith for uh, the next uh, prophet, and that could take a while, uh, which is why I'm not likely to make it there before uh, another civilization does. But that's also why I want to get a settler out relatively quickly here, uh, because then I can uh, you know, build another city, uh, get a shrine up, and then I'll have more faith happening. But Stonehenge will help a lot. I've got Stonehenge, which means nobody else does. Now, I don't know if the Celts are in. If they got a good start with forests, uh, they should be coming up on founding a religion real soon now. But I'm thinking not, because as far as I can tell, uh, religion overview, uh, world religions, uh, there's no... Um, there's no other pantheons yet so that leads me to believe that the Celts are not in the game anyway uh, we'll let things go another couple of turns and then I'll call it apart Okay, so I'll uh, send my uh, archer over here to go after this camp. I'm going to get trapping this turn. There's trapping. Um, now, I said I was going to aim for optics. So that means I have to go for sailing now. On Pangea, it's not so critical. But given my lie here, and the fact that I've got just this land bridge, uh, I think sailing will actually be helpful. So, uh, there we go. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to call it a part here. I'm going to try not having uh, five hour parts on this. So uh, I'm going to save my game. And uh, so that's, that's it for uh, this first part. Uh, the next part, I think uh, additional things will actually be uh, going on. Uh, it, things will start to actually happen uh, a little more than just a scout wandering around and so on because I will get my second city up in uh, the next part and there's a good chance I'll have a third or a fourth city up as well and that will start generating more uh, things happening per turn it'll also slow th slow the turns down but uh, this is uh, after turn 123. Uh, that's Remember, this is marathon, so there's about 1,500 turns in the game. Uh, so it's uh, there's still a fair bit to come. Anyway, um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.